Hello and welcome to the video for how do I do level streaming using blueprint nodes. I've gone ahead and created a quick example here we'll run through. Basically I'm using blueprint nodes to trigger map loading as I go from one room to the other. So when I go close to this door you'll notice the green level loads. When I go close to the next door the red level loads. When I go close to this door, nothing happens because I've gone ahead and not set this up. We will set it up during our example. You will also notice that the blue room is no longer here. I have set it up to unload as I pass through the red door. I've also set it up where if I walk closer to here, it will reload and that door will unload. If we want to see it in an example, boop, and we'll go back to here and unload. So I'm using blueprint nodes to do that. Let's go ahead and cover how we do that. To access your levels menu, it's under windows and levels. If you want more information on how to use the level streaming, check out the what is level streaming video, as well as the how do I use level streaming using streaming volumes. But as a quick refresher course, the persistent level is a map that is basically a container that holds, sorry, that holds other maps and the streaming, the persistent level is what contains all of the stuff that should be persistent. In my example, my persistent level contains my streaming volumes from my previous example, as well as my player start, my sky sphere, a light source, an atmosphere fog. It can contain other things that you want to be persistent, maybe a user interface manager or other actors that should always be around. The individual maps are in here. And by default, I've gone ahead and hidden them so you can't see them. Now, if you're going to use blueprints, you want to right click on a map, change streaming method, and make sure it's set to blueprint. Using blueprint means it will only load when you use the blueprint load stream method. If you have it set to always loaded, that will be determined by the volumes. So, since we're doing blueprints, you'll see this little blue dot. And that will indicate that we are using blueprint streaming method. So let's go through our example here. I created a quick little simple blueprint called streaming trigger that will load or unload things based on the settings I've assigned to them. So if we look at this trigger right here, assuming I can click on it, I should have assigned a billboard. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's go in here and let's add a nice little billboard to make this easy. So we'll go to billboard, we'll add a billboard. Billboard is basically just a 2D icon that is a representation of anything. You can change the sprite to whatever you want. But the nice thing about it is when you have a billboard, now if we went back into our map, we will see a billboard and you can click on the billboard to select your volume. It's great when you only have a volume. So for our blueprint, I've set it up where it has two parameters, a level to load and a level to unload. And all you do is you type in the name of your map and it will load or unload it. If we go ahead and we edit it, we will go through our script. Now, besides the billboard that I just added, this is a simple box collision volume. That's it. And I'm triggering on the begin overlap event. If we go in our big begin overlap event, I am running that into a sequence so that way I could actually have one trigger that will load or unload based on what I want to do. So to load or unload, you will use the load stream level node or the unload stream level node. What you will pass in to those nodes are the level name, which is a name variable, make visible after load, which is a bool checkbox. Basically, you can choose to preload streamed levels. Maybe you have a train that is seven cars long and you want to make sure that you have the appropriate part of the map loaded but not necessarily visible so maybe a car or two in advance you'll go ahead and you could uncheck this and this will load it into memory but it will not make it visible until you choose to later and you could just simply go ahead and do a get streaming level and load that strip make visible right here is level visible and you can set it to true and you could go ahead and set the level to be visible if you wish to not make it visible on load. For example, we want to make it visible on load because this is our example. Should block on load? Should block on load is useful if you have a loading screen and you 
don't want to see or let your player do anything. It's really only useful when you have a loading screen, honestly. Other than that, if you have a larger level you're trying to load up, a larger map, and you have should block on load checked, depending on the speed of the player's computer, it may actually stop everything for a few seconds, and that's not a good game experience. So, what we do is we take our name, which is our level to load. Now, for sanity's sake, what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if that's equal to none. I'm trying to see if I actually have a level to load. If I have a level to load, therefore it's false, I'm going to go and actually check to see have we actually loaded that level yet. Going back and forth between triggers, it seems kind of silly to constantly load or unload things that are, that are already loaded. So we just go ahead and check to make sure it's already loaded. And if it is, we do nothing. If it's not, now we want to go ahead and load it up and we call our load stream level node. And that's it. This is a node that will run and the fire off other things. It will not stop anything unless you have the should block and load. And if it's done, then you have your completed event in case maybe you wanted to. For example, we had a door. Right now we have no doors. Let's say you wanted it where the player walks up, they trigger the volume, maybe the door plays a little animation, and then it opens up. Well, you could, for example, go in here, fire off the animation, tell it to load the stream level, and then once it's completed, you actually open up the door itself, and that way you make sure your level is completely loaded before you actually allow the player to see it. Now our other branch, in the sequence is the unload stream level and that one's really simple it just simply takes the name and it unloads it if that level is currently not loaded you'll get an editor error but you won't crash it's just simply going to say hey you tried to unload something that didn't exist well it's pretty simple we just simply make sure we don't do that let's make sure we actually have a level we want to unload and if we have a level we want to unload we check and see well, is it actually loaded? We get the streaming level, check to see if it's loaded, pass it back into a branch, and then if that's true, we go ahead and unload the level. So using this quick little blueprint, we can both load a valid level and unload a valid level in sequence on one trigger. And if you don't have anything set up, like in this example, nothing to unload, then nothing will happen. We have this one right here which actually has a level to load, it will load the red room, and a level to unload, it will go ahead and unload the blue room. And then this trigger here does pretty much the opposite. It will load the blue room and unload the red room. So if we want to set this up, for example, in our little white room here, let's go ahead and I like to copy and paste because it's a lot easier. So we can go ahead and alt drag this over and this will make a duplicate. And we'll go ahead and position this into the appropriate spot. Let's say right about there. Let's go ahead and edit our text here. We want to load map four, version two, since version one is what I'm using for streaming volumes. And let's go ahead and unload where we just came from, which would be map two, version two. We don't want to unload map three because we're in map three, and if we did that, we'd fall down. And this should work. Let's go ahead and find out. We'll walk up, load in. We'll walk up, load in. And you'll notice the blue room's unloaded. We'll walk up, load in. And you actually notice that the other room has unloaded behind us. Now I don't have any reloaded triggers in here, so we're kind of stuck. But as you can see, that's a nice easy way to make a segmented game into a bunch of smaller portions and then load and unload them on demand. Now I have created a Game Jam game for October 2015. I will include the link below for the full source code. I make extensive use for this. I have 24 individual puzzles, each inside their own room, and I basically load and load with an animated door between each room, so that way not only does it only have the resources loaded you need for the current puzzle, it also makes it much, much easier when you're actually working on level design. Because can, if you can imagine, you have this right here. This is only four rooms. Imagine if I added 20, 30 more rooms. I have a multi-floored house. 
once you start editing and you have to zoom in and zoom out and start working on your actual level design, you're just going to have a hectic time with so many things on screen. Well, with level streaming, you can just selectively load and unload whatever you're working on and have a nice, easy level design experience. So keep that in mind. Blueprint level streaming is a great way to segregate things. And as you can see, it's really simple to use. And I would highly recommend it for a lot of things. One good thing is if you design your game in mind with Blueprint level streaming, start off with your blank persistent level and then start from there. You could have it load into a loading screen that is its own complete map and then you could have it load into maybe an introduction or a video that plays and then you could have it load into a main menu. You could have it load into the actual first part of the game. It makes loading and reloading save games really simple if you have things segregated like for example if you check my demo my game out every room has its own start spawn point so that way when i need to reload i just load directly into the spawn point for whatever map they were in and it makes it really simple to add in a continue feature now one thing to keep in mind here since these are set to load on blueprint you will find unless you actually do this. Let me go ahead and run it without that. You don't have anything when you start. You have not told the game to actually load up your starting map. If you notice in here, my starting map, map one, is where I've set my starting player start at. Now since this is set to blueprint for the streaming method, it's actually going to start off like this and my player is going to fall through the world. So we want to make sure this is loaded at game start. So using my persistent level blueprint, I open the persistent levels level blueprint and on the begin play node, I actually just load the stream level and this is a good place to use the block on load. We want to make sure that level is loaded before we do anything else. Now, if you need to work on other individual levels blueprints, you have different icons here that allow you to do certain things. Like for example, let's go ahead and make that visible, save it out. These are handy icons. This will open up the individual level blueprints. Let's say each room had its own unique action that it needed to do and you want to use the level blueprint. Well, this is just a nice shortcut to get to each individual level blueprint. You can also go to blueprints, sub levels, and then edit the level blueprints from here. I highly recommend if you're going to make a game, you start using level streaming and use either the streaming volumes or the level blueprints or the blueprint nodes and just it is a great way to incre increase your workflow. Now you'll notice here actually I made a small mistake. Over here I have a streaming trigger but if you notice I have all my maps hidden but the streaming trigger is still here. Well, I accidentally made the streaming trigger inside my persistent level. Persistent level is your main one and each of these individual maps are your sub levels. Whatever is bolded right now, when you double click, is what map is currently being worked on. So since I created a new object and I had my persistent level selected, it created it in my persistent level. Now this may not be an issue unless, for example, what if I had map 1 selected and I created this over here? Well, unfortunately map 1 would be unloaded, that trigger would not be spawned in, and I would have fallen through the floor. This is easy to correct. It happens all the time, especially when you're first getting used to it. You could just go into the persistent level, because persistent level is where I have actually created this trigger on accident. Let's go ahead and just cut it out by hitting Control x Go to the appropriate map where I want it loaded, which actually should be map 3, and we'll paste it in. And now you'll notice it's now part of map 3. And we should actually, let's go ahead and move it over a little bit, and there we go. And that's it. It's a nice easy way to, you, you can map, you know, you could copy paste things back and forth between each map without any issue at all. It, it happens all the time. It's nice to every so often just check your different maps check and make sure that you have things in the appropriate places and you know it's it's a workflow you'll get used to but once you get used to it it is a great thing to do if you have any questions please comment below